Hey everyone, I'm Billy Hollowell and this is Pure Talk, brought to you by PureFlix.com. I'm very excited that Atticus Schaefer, one of my favorite actors, is joining us tonight. He has played the character of Brick on the hilarious, the ever hilarious show, The Middle on ABC, one of the most family friendly and entertaining shows on television today. We'll also be joined by PureFlix.com's Sarah Hartland to discuss entertainment and the state of faith and family on TV. So let's get started. Atticus, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So I'm not exaggerating when I tell you that The Middle is like one of, if not my favorite shows. And I'm I told so you this, to I've told that. you this before. I, I love the show. Yes. Um, and we'll talk about this, but the show is coming to an end. Yes. Right? It's yes, coming to it an is. end. Yeah. But you've been on this show for almost a decade, right? Yes. You've grown up on this show. Yes. What has been the most rewarding part of playing Brick? You know, the my whole time in the industry, acting, voiceover acting, whatever the project may be, uh, it's been nothing but an adventure. And it's, it, you know, I'm so thankful that I've been able to see all the things I've been able to see and meet all the people I've been able to meet and uh, have fun doing all these different roles. But the character of Brick specifically, there's something so important about him uh, in today's times because he is a role model character. Um, he's a character that he shows it's okay to be unique. And that's something that is the greatest advice I've ever received was from my mom and it was always be yourself. And uh, I think that that's something that's so important and to have a character like Brick demonstrate that it's okay to be smart, be unique, march to the beat of your own drummer and, and uh, not just follow a trend. I, I think that's very important for today's times. And so to be able to be that role model character has been such a privilege for me. So the middle though is coming to an end yes. this week. That's, that's got to be an emotional thing. We were talking about earlier how like there's lots of positive things about you know spending time with your cats and having yes. fun. But what are you going to miss the most? You know, um, it, it's we made it a family. You know, the, not just the cast but the crew as well. We all really became a family, and I think that that's what I'm going to miss the most because uh, I'm a creature of habit. I do love my routine, so you know, every day it's like, all right, get to go to work, get to go hang out at the Warner Ranch, and. Uh, do some fun stuff and make funny happen but you know we 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 really bonded together as a family over all the years and even you know this is a this is a good memory that I have is is the last day of filming because obviously you know we we finished filming back in March um, everyone's gonna be able to watch it until May um, there's a time gap there and when we finished filming the show uh, we really treated it like a big, just a family celebration. In the morning, one of the PAs who's, who's been with us since the beginning, he made up his special Belgian waffles, <laughs> and, and we all had kind of like a nice little unique breakfast. Um, an electrician guy who's a friend of mine, uh, he and the electric crew in between setting up all the shots and everything, they cooked up a big brisket. And we, you know, got the baked beans it and the brisket. Sounds like my kind of place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to go to this party. <laughs> it was such a, it was such a sweet moment, and we really kind of just had this big old family potluck celebration at the end. And you know, we all gave our speeches and everything, and you know, loved on each other and loved on each other a lot this season. But especially that day, it was, it was a, a sweet moment, and I'm going to miss that the most. Well, you, the, the word family keeps sticking out to me, and we yeah. use that term family friendly, right? It's yeah. uh, like. This show is a show that you could sit with your family and watch, and over the course of nine years, I have seen every episode, I promise you. Excellent. Um, That's we, awesome. My wife and I love it. But That's you know, awesome. you can do that and feel comfortable that you're not going to be kind of watching anything you're uncomfortable with or whatever. And right. so how did you guys maintain that, and how, how much was that intentional throughout that? Period. You know, and that is a good question because there there are so many shows that you know sometimes they'll try to sneak something in or they deviate, um, and especially in, in secular television. But in my opinion, we really stuck with m the morals that we had. And yes, we do bring up issues where you know it's it, it can be anything from uh, Frankie and Mike wanting to spend Valentine's Day together. I remember that was an earlier episode. Later on, obviously there was the character of Brad, which that was there. But we we approached it not from a you need to really look at this or we need to go too far. How far can we get to hitting right. the line? It was just being real. We took real life situations. This is life. I exactly. It's real life situations that happen. Yes, we may, you know, make things a little bit more exaggerated because it's funny, but in a way that's how you see it in your heads when you're experiencing it in real life. So I, I think that it was really sticking to the morals and, and a lot of the storylines were based on things that the writers went through themselves. So it was it was real life stuff that we all kind of drew from. And obviously us as the actors, we would contribute as well where, where we could. And it, we all kind of just came together and drew stuff and drew from our lives and then put it together and put it in the show. 
Yeah, that kind of family-friendly television is rare today. Yes. And what's also rare is having an outspoken Christian like yourself in a secular television show. So, mm -hmm. so tell us a little bit about what, what that's like. What is it like being a believer on set? Absolutely. You know, that's, that's, uh, that's been such a journey, too, because um, my mom, she's a Christian, and she obviously told me about Jesus growing up, and she presented that to me. Um, but she, she did always allow for me the opportunity to learn and to, to grow in my faith. And uh, I really committed to Christianity um, when I was 15. It was, yes, when I was 15. Uh, and I really, I just, I, I knew I had that draw to say, I need to know the Lord. I need to know where I stand. Yeah. I need to pick the side. And um, especially with all the, it now granted, I was very protected on this show because right. we, we aren't like typical shows out there in secular television. Um, but you know, it is something where you, you are presented with things that you're not normally presented with, uh, and there's a lot more of it. And especially in today's times with technology and everything, there's so many things that you can you just be, have access. be exposed there's to access or have access exposure. to or yeah. whatever it may be. And so I knew that I needed to, to commit my life to Christ, and I went through that journey um, and, and uh, started to grow in that. And as I was growing in my faith, I've never been a person that I think should Bible thump or anything like that. I wasn't, you know, let me force this on you, and oh, you need to listen to this and whatever. Um, I was always very respectful. I always still am. But I, I do know that there is a difference between right and wrong, and I do not have that line blurred. I, I know that there is a difference. I know my opinion, but I'll present it as my opinion, not as, you know, let me, right. let me beat it into you. And as I did that, as I went through um, the, the remainder of the show, after becoming a Christian, saying, no, I'm going to stand my, my ground for this, and, and this is what I believe, this is my opinion, uh, on certain issues, maybe it's something like that, but then this is also my belief in my faith. Um, a lot of the other crew who were Christians but couldn't necessarily talk about it, they started to speak up. And so we kind of all came together and supported each other. And, a little and, community and, there. And really yeah. had a community, absolutely. Family. We prayed for, yeah, <laughs> we pray for each other, be there for each other, be able to vent with each other and everything like that. Whatever, whatever it may be, whatever the situation was, we had that community there. And sure. so I was blessed in, in moving forward in that to have that uh, backing me up. And of course, you know, my mom supporting me 100% of the way and uh, friends and family that I have. Um, but now, not to not to present it as anything else. I mean, in secular TV, it is risky. Uh, I have worked with people that, as soon as they find out I'm a Christian, completely treat me different and kind of, oh, that's good for you. Okay, fine. Right, right. You know, leave me alone, type of thing. But that happens, and I think that we can do um, some of the best work in the secular world as Christians. I think that we are supposed, we've been called upon to be lights in the world, and I think that's important for us to go into yeah. the secular world. And again, how do you present it? If you if you go in as respectful and you're more of an example as opposed to, okay, here's how I'm going to brimstone. beat you with this message right, until exactly, you listen. Right, exactly. And they there, probably won't. <laughs> there's a difference, and that's where people receive it more, I think. And it's interesting, your question is interesting, and so is your response, because you were already in, when you say age 15, you were already well into the show, right. well into Hollywood, and that is fascinating to me that you were able to make that decision still instead absolutely. of going the other way absolutely went that way absolutely and you know part part of it is how I'm wired I'm definitely not the type of person that is a is a partier or anything like that I've, I've I'll be honest with you I've never gone to any of the rap parties for the show I'm I went to the 100th and 200th episode once and I was like that's it that's all I want but I'm a person that you know I love I love hanging out with my pets and I'd rather watch stranger things or something like that on on television or see something on Pure Flix or whatever and just chill out at home and, and do that as opposed to going out and partying yeah. and all, you know, all the things that a lot of people my age will do in this industry. And so that definitely was a benefit as well. Um, you know, you've faced your own set of challenges in life. You know, everybody has a story, brittle mm -hmm. bone disease, overcoming, I'm sure, obstacles with that. What have you learned about yourself and God throughout that process? And, you know, that is a good question to, to just add to that. Um, brittle bone disease, that's, that's slang for the scientific term is osteogenesis imperfecta, and there's different types. I was typed as a type 4 when I was a baby, and it's exactly as you said. It's brittle bone disease. It affects the collagen, and I'm not a doctor, so, you know, this is all stuff that people can research as as you listen to this, um, but uh, you know I do no pain. Uh, I do no pain. I've had many fractures in my life, had to recover. I've had plates, screws, you know, rods put in through all my legs. My back is in an S curve because of it. Um, so I, I do no pain, and that's one of the things that I have learned from having OI 
is it's helped me to be more empathetic and be more compassionate. And really, you get placed in situations where you have to depend on God. And that actually is what led me to make the decision to say, I have to pick my side. I have to, I have to know the Lord. I have to really know the Lord, not just this generalized knowing of there is a God and he had a son. It's, it's more than that. Is, uh, I was recovering from an injury, and it was an injury that was like, I have no clue how I'm going to get out of this. You know, I'm in excruciating pain. I don't know what to do. And then, you know, leaned on him, and he, he got me out of that. And in the hospital, watching more Christian television, I, wanted, I, I had that yearning spark in me. And then it was, you know, Mom, can I read from your Bible? Absolutely. Here, you know, we'll study it together. So now we do our Bible study together That's and amazing. start going to church. Then I got baptized in 2015. So I love that story because a, a lot of actors are starting to speak out about their struggles, whether yes. it's uh, mental health issues. Yes. You, know, you mentioned Stranger Things. Gaten Matarazzo is doing some great work. But a lot of it se tends to focus on here's how I've overcome instead of here's how God has helped me yes, cope. Yes, absolutely. And I love that. Uh, but I want to go back to something you said earlier. Sure. You said that Brick is a role model character. Yeah. So my question to you is, what are some role model characters that inspired either Brick or, or your, your, own, your own journey? You know, that's, that's, uh, that, that is a very good question. You know, um, being on the show, I would, I would tell them about my interest. I was a homeschool baby, so my mom was like, you whatever you you have to do this but i also want you to do whatever you have interest in tell me and we'll we'll go at it 110 percent and so we did you know i i'm a i'm a big fan of military history i i went through all that with my mom and she supported that 100 percent of the way and you know it's it's funny because they're they're it's it's a different perspective it's not typically what you'll hear especially on on christian television too is there's a mindset that i can so respect, and this is why I love our nation's military, of people that want to fight the good fight. And even the Apostle Paul talks about it when in, in the Bible. There is a perseverance fight that we have sure. to go through every day, every day that we live. And I look at people and I, you know, I've, I've seen people like Marcus Luttrell speak and everyone like that, and that all kind of added to the strength that I have. But one of the driving forces in my life, they're, they're two major people. One of them is, of course, my mom, because my mom also has the same condition I do. And she's gone through a heck of a lot more than just that condition in her life. Um, and so for me, I, I hear the stories that she tells me about things that she has overcome and the strength that she had and that she still has to have every day because, you know, with the condition, there's no cure. So there's still issues that happen. Um, I am so, so proud of her and, and, you know, she's definitely my hero and that's, that's something that I'm so happy that Brick gets to say about his mom. My mom is my hero for sure. But then one of the things later on that, that also helped, and I think it's amazing how the Lord will put different people in your life at different times, could be for a day, could be for years, and how does that affect you? Um, I, there was a, uh, when I first started going to church, my church had a man day. And so I was like, oh, this is cool. You know, some friends of ours that got us into the church, the husband, he was like, I'll take you. If your dad can't take you, let's go. All right. So we went there and uh, who was speaking is a lieutenant colonel by th of the Marine Corps uh, by the name of Trey Ardiz. And when he spoke, you know, I know that the spirit was on him. And, and a lot of the things that he was talking about at that time was stuff that I was going through, issues I was going through, whether it be, you know, a mental thing, emotional thing or whatever it was. Uh, physical thing, physical pain, and he was just talking. To, he was talking to us in a very real, you know, life can really stink. There is suffering. There, there are so many things that can really affect you in life. How do you overcome that? And what is the mindset that you have to have? And it's bearing the full armor, you know, equipping yourself with the Word of God and having that relationship with Him and knowing that your strength isn't your own, which is a good point that I hear all the time. Is people think, oh, I have to be strong? No, you don't. Right. Your strength comes from outside of you, and it's placed in you, and you lean on that strength. And it was a it was a validating moment for me. And I remember my mom my mom came to get me, and uh, we we were going out to lunch, and I just burst into tears in the car, and I was like, Mom, I just got validated on so many things that I've been going through, 
And um, that's and, incredible. And it was yeah, it was such an incredible moment. Because some people turn to anger when they don't understand that. Absolutely, and and not for nothing, you know, I'm still a human. That that happens sure. to me. You sure. know, there's still stuff, especially dr try driving on the 405 out here. Oh, I've, I've already yes, I've already <laughs> learned that. I've learned that lesson. It's 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 awful. It's real. The the rage can yes. get real. And that's <laughs> that's understandable rage Absolutely. on the 405. Thank you. <laughs> but but it happens. You know, we're still human. And how do we make that cognitive choice of choosing choosing Christ over choosing us, right? Right. Wow. And how do you discern that? And I'm still learning. I am by no means. We all do, right? It's like a, yeah, it's a, it's lifelong, a lifelong yeah. thing. I Absolutely. mean, my parents do the same thing all the time, right? Yeah. That they're still learning. Absolutely. Do you have anything else? I have a million questions. But well, I'm, go I'm, for I'm, it. Go <laughs> for it. Well, no, I mean, I'm, I'm going to contain myself because <laughs> we have producers who I'm sure are. There's so, I mean, there's so <laughs> much that we could get into. There's so much that we could get into. But yeah, no, that was my, that was my big question. That's is a as, great soon as, question. as soon as you said, you know, role model character, I think we, we lack those. Absolutely. In media today, and I Absolutely. and I love that you pointed that out. So thanks for sharing your own story because Thank we you. we all have somebody that influences us, Absolutely. whether fictional yeah. or or not. Absolutely. And Absolutely. we can all be role models. I think we all tend to think well, that yeah, Atticus you know, is my new role model. Yeah, well, <laughs> he, mine too. Yeah, for sure, That's for awesome. sure. So let me let me ask you this: What is next for you now that this huge season is coming to a close? Absolutely, yes. You know, that's that's um, this kind of ties in with what we talked about earlier: is the, the the secular versus the Christian, in terms of what do you make and the stories that you want to tell. I love stories. I'm a huge storyteller. That's what made me want to get into acting. Uh, but that's one perspective of it because you're a character in the story. Um, I have a few stories that I, I think are worthy of being told, uh, some series ideas and a couple movie ideas. And so I do have a production company now, which I'm very excited about. It's called Ambulo Sapiro Films, which is, I'm a big, again, homeschooler, so it's Latin. It. Um, uh, and uh, I, have, I have some stories I want to tell. So it's, it's going to be a journey of, you know, finishing writing them up and, and how do I get to, uh, get to telling them. And again, t taking a story that has the messages in it, the Christian messages, but I want to present them in more of a secular way, a more a more real way, yes. and then see the response from that. Mm. I That's love fun. that. We recently talked in an episode about storytelling yeah. and really? how important that is. Yeah, so it's Fantastic. interesting that you're saying that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just awesome. you know, yeah. the idea that Jesus was subtle with his stories. Absolutely. And so I think, yeah, the fact that that's what you want to do next is really yeah. awesome. Thank you. Any final words for us? Thank you guys for letting me be here. I <laughs> Thanks love, for being I, here. I this love is talking amazing. to you guys. I want to keep talking to you. Absolutely. I wish we had a whole day. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe someday we will have a whole day. <laughs> Maybe. That'd, That'd be, amazing. be great. All series. That's the new goal. Yeah. That's the new the, goal. The, I love the Atticus that. show. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so yes. much for joining us, Absolutely. Atticus. Thank you. Um, and you know, I got to say, my family and I, we are going to miss the middle. Thank you. We really thank are. You. We really are. Oh, believe me, we are too. <laughs> well, thanks so much for tuning in, and uh, we will be back in a minute. Welcome back to Pure Talk. So it was great talking with Atticus, but we've actually kept Atticus here. He he didn't want to leave. No, no. We had I, cookies. I, I like and talking so with you guys. Yeah, the cookies are nice, <laughs> and I got a cup of coffee, and I was like, I, I can, can I hang out? And well, like sure. Of course, we'll, we'll keep you around a little while longer. Excellent. It's fine. And we were <laughs> going to talk about the lack, and we are going to talk about lack of faith and family friendly projects on TV, and that was something Sarah and I were going to talk about. We're like, we got to bring Atticus. Yeah. Here. Well, because we touched okay. on it in yeah. in the interview which I guess we're continuing, but we, we touched on this idea, right, mm -hmm. that the middle was so unique because it was something you could actually watch with your entire family. Mm -hmm. These days, even on, like, children's programming sometimes, every once in a while you, you hear something and you're like, all right, I know that, like, a kid won't understand that, but it still makes me uncomfortable. It's become yes. the norm. Absolutely. Why do you think that it, like, why is it such a rare thing to find a show where everyone can sit down and not worry? You know, uh, and, and again, I'm by no means an expert, but you know, I have been in the industry for 12 years now, and I've I have seen things. You know, um, I, I love watching stories. I love I love the movie watching, TV watching, and like you said, you'll you'll see things that either either you question why did that have to be in there, or even uh, it wasn't necessary to telling the story. And you know, there are certain things like you know, if it's a war movie, of course there's going to be some violence right. in it, and whatever. But when you're when it comes to how do you properly present faith in the family friendly content, I, I, there there needs to be a realness that I think is is severely lacking. And my opinion is when I've when I've seen, you know, certain projects and, and of course, you know, they're doing the best they can or they're trying to find the right way of telling a story. A lot of times, unfortunately, and I and I see this with a lot of, of uh, Christians that I interact with, is that it's a very
Uh, all right, I, I gotta be careful. It's a very, <laughs> it's a very. Insert a bleep. <laughs> it has its own style. It has its own style. Yes. <laughs> it has its own style, but it's a very surface level depth, sure. right? Sure. So there, there isn't a lot of depth to it. And again, you we know, want the audience to get it so badly that right. we beat them with it. Yeah, right. That's what we're saying. Exactly. Like, instead and of just good story. Exactly. And and I think that the skills that need to be enhanced are the skills to properly tell a story. Have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And don't bring in something that doesn't feel like it should be in there. And one of the, I love literature, obviously, as my character does. Um, I'm, I'm big, I'm just getting into C.S. Lewis. The microfiche is my favorite thing. Excellent. In the middle. My favorite thing, anyway. Excellent. <laughs> but no, you know, I'm, I'm big into C.S. Lewis. I'm big into to Tolkien and everyone. And um, reading those books, they're really just telling a story. It isn't until you really dissect what is going on in the story that you realize, oh, wait, that's a Christian message. Or, oh, right. I, can, I can see the relation between Aslan and Jesus or, or whatever exactly. it may be. But what's so interesting is that now, more and more, Hollywood has its own message. Yes. Right, like yeah. Christians are guilty yes. of it for sure, of like Absolutely. we, because because there's a reason, right? But right. now it's you know whatever political message or right. type of activism. Billy, I'm sure that you've got. Like, yes. Can oh see no. That I, yeah. I, no. I, yeah. I mean, there's so much that goes on, and we can't. You can't fault people for that though, because if you have a worldview and you want to present it, and you're good at your art, you're going to do that. Where we need to come alongside, and we need to do that. We also complain all the time about how bad Hollywood is. And look, there, there is bias, there is all that exists, yeah. but at the same time, we have retreated a lot too. We've pulled out of Hollywood, we're not there. Yes, and, and I think that that's where, again, as I was, I was talking to you guys before, we shouldn't be afraid of making a secular movie as Christians because- C.S. Lewis said. Right, right, exactly. Because as you go into uh, the storytelling, as you go into Hollywood and you kind of go into this supposed dark place, you'd be surprised at how much light is actually there. And when you can bring that to light and you can give the choice and not have the only option be whatever this activist thing is or whatever this bias is or whatever, that might be a worldview or a different view than ours, we need to give that choice. And that's something that, that um, you know, my mom being my teacher, she always presented to me, she gave me a choice, but it was good choices. And it, it was, was educated choices. It was choice. educated was choices. She helped me to use logic and critical thinking. And I think that's something that today is severely lacking yeah. with a lot of people. And that needs to come back. I think we've solved all of the problems in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of them. Obviously. Like that in right. you know half minutes. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't take much, right? A candle in this room wouldn't make that much light because we've got all these lovely. Right. But in a, in a dark room, it's going right. to light it up. And, and the I more think candles you have. Exactly. Which is what happened. <laughs> they, had, they formed a group. He found other people in exactly. the group. Right. And we all kind of just came together. Right. Again, we've solved every single problem. <laughs> Any final words before we conclude this? Well, if we've solved all the problems, let's just quit. I think we're well, good to go. Let's quit while we're no, ahead. We're good for at least today. Exactly. We're good for at least today. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> well, Atticus, thank you again. And that's our show for tonight. I'm Billy Hollowell. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you next time on another episode of Pure Thoughts.